The name for the kind of scope that exists in that nested relationship is called child scope. But another scope that exists inside Angular is called root scope. That is scope that exists outside of any controller, the top level scope. To show you how that works, let's just add another layer on top of all of these controllers. So I'm going to add another row on top of the parent controller. And I'm going to add another input control. I'm going to output a P. Let's just get rid of this call here. And then let's just close out the bottom. Okay, so now we have a variable which a scope variable which we're binding to outside of any controller and that's what's called the root scope variable. And in addition to this, I'm going to comment out the function and the scope variable in parent. So now parent and child are blank. And let's go back into our index and then let's run this. Okay. Let's zoom out a little bit and then let's add in ng inspector. So it's what we expected. We've got root scope at the top. We've got parent controller and we've got the child controller. We haven't set up any scope variables inside the controllers themselves. So what should happen now when I type this is root scope. You can see root scope has added the name variable to itself. Parent controller and child, contro child controller don't have their own name variables on their own scopes. Via scope inheritance, they're just accessing the root scope name variable. But then as before, the pet if we enter in the parent scope then the parent scope adds its own name variable and then if we add the child scope the child scope adds its own variable but in addition to actually being able to access the root scope from within the the, the template from, from within the html we can access it from within the controllers themselves by injecting it so if we go back into our main.js as well as scope we can inject root scope into there and then let's also add it to the child scope and then if you remember we have that reset function on the child on the reset button on the child controller so i'm going to actually set instead of scope.name i'm going to set root scope.name is equal to reset by child and then let's refresh our page have a look at what we've got. So we've got the reset function on the child controller. So I can type in on the root scope, this is set via root. And then when I click the reset button here, it's reset by child. So every scope from every controller derives from the top level root scope. So you initially might think it's a great way to share data between different controllers, between controllers that don't even have a parent-child relationship, perhaps between controllers that have a sibling relationship, it might seem to be a great way to pass data between them. And it isn't necessarily a bad thing to do. I personally use this a number of times, especially for information like authentication, the logged in user, which is typically information in the applications that I build that needs to be shared everywhere but definitely view every single piece of data or function that you add to root scope with a critical eye. It is a code smell if you end up putting a lot of your business knowledge and a lot of the data that's important in your application inside root scope. 